you were born in Durban in the late 1970s, early 80s, and you were a surfer, there was a very good chance that you rode a safari or a spider-shaped surfboard. To get a custom board from safari was very special. well known today that he's shaped well over 100,000 surfboards. Those boards all have a story to tell. I've been around a long time and I've surfed as a quarry surfboard. My first board was a spider. I had a spider built for me in 1978. A lot of spiders in my book. Spider safari. My first board was a spider safari. Safari surfboard, missile, got a lot of spiders. First board was a spider. My first board was a spider. Spider Murphy safari surf. Safari spider. Spider Murphy safari. Safari spider. Best board I've ever ridden. And still is. It's fun. Let me know if you need anything out of your lunchbox yet, yeah, because I'm sitting on it. Yeah, well, I'll get hungry, I'll let you know. Okay. Right, so we're going to have a look at you here. Yeah. See, in many ways, but I think we might be ending up here. I think spiders played a key role in the evolution of, of global surfing and surfboards in, in particular. I was born in 1947, in March the 20th. Over his life, he started shaping in his teens when uh, it was still longboards with single fins. I wanted to go surfing. Well, I knew I had to get in the water quickly. So I was just gluing blocks of styrofoam together. I got my mother's bread knife. I drew out a shape and I just cut it out, like add this sandpaper to straighten it up. I used a cheese grater to shape the rails and a bit of sandpaper finish off and I glassed it. And two days later I was surfing. There was almost like two camps, you know, with, with surfing. There was guys that were on the straight and narrow and there were guys that weren't so on the straight and narrow. And Spider um, was pretty much on the straight and narrow. All the top riders from Sean Thompson through to guys that were youngsters at that stage like Pierre Tosti all rode safari surfboards and when you opened Zigzag Surfing magazine they had these amazing ads and uh, the, there was one in particular of all these pros on a bus. The guys that really made it were the guys that were on like the safari team. He always made the best boards you know we always knew that you get a spider it's going to be the most finely tuned board you know so he took that through into the late 80s and the early 90s. Spider's been part of all these moves you know from single fins to twin fins to thrusters to quads. South Africa's hottest property Sean Thompson as the competition draws near each contestant prepares to attack the awesome forces of the pipeline He's seen and shaped everything in between, right across that, that whole spectrum. He's been in the surf industry you know, from the beginning, basically. I think just his passion about surfing goes into his shaping. To be at that level, you almost need to be obsessed. It goes beyond passion. And, and I would say Spider was obsessed in a positive way. Never afraid to push design and, and, and push the way forward and move the needle. For me, the surfboard shape is the most unsung sort of hero. We always focus so much on the surfer in the water, what the surfer is doing. We speak about what board is riding in that, but no one really talks about specifically the shape and the influence that they have. So we look back at uh, surfers like Sean Thompson, um, Greg Emsley, uh, Paul Canning. Um, there's so many, there's so many good servers I've worked with. The one who gives you the most input and interest is the one who's going to be successful, and he's going to change you. It's an incredibly important relationship, I believe, between a surfer and a shaper. It's all about confidence and being able to understand each other and to read each other and trying to interpret 
what you need in the board. What the shaper is doing in the shaping bay has an influence on what performance that surfer can get out of the board in the water. So Paul Canning, uh, we had a really good relationship. When I was back in Durban, we'd meet every morning, have a surf together. And I'd ride his board and feel it, and then we'd plan his next event. He'd surf big waves. I had to, I had, I had to go out with him and experience that same feeling. And Paul gave me the feedback that I needed to know. He'd come into the shaping bay, and he'd bring his, his favorite board. He always had a favorite board. I don't think Spider ever shaped a board for me when I wasn't present in the bay. You know, He would be like, okay, when can you make it? You know, it wasn't a case of I'm gonna push out you know, six boards, eight boards, when you get home in between the tour, you know, and pick them up when you're here. When we're going to shape your boards, you know, you're going to set aside a weekend and we're going to do it together, you know. Sometimes he'd bring a board from overseas, we'd have a look at it and see how we could incorporate into our designs. Go through the, the shaping of the board, put it on your arm, feel it, feel the rails, feel everything about the curve and work on it together and go and compete on the board, surf the board. My whole surfing career I've been sponsored by Spider for I think over 25 years and knowing nothing about boards I could basically base my success on Spider because I don't know about box rails, pinchy rails, what towel I must have, how pulled in the nose or whatever, I must be Spider knows all that so I've never had to learn about the boards. I don't believe I would have done as well as I did and got, to the, got the results I did without um, such a close relationship with uh, Spider. I think that uh, approachability of uh, being able to see him and access him and go stand in the shaping bay and get full of foam dust and you know watch him talk to you with the pencil in hand and, and, and the mask on top of his head, uh, that's always been a, a really good thing you know. I think uh, there's, there's something of that that's been lost uh, these days in uh, the way surfboards have been done and crafted and uh, that's something that uh, Spider's always been able to do is just sort of keep that uh, shaping bay door open. So Spider was always, always fine tuning our boards and, and treated every one of his boards like it was going to be the next best thing, you know. So very, very special times looking back fondly on, on those times with Spider. You know, to be in the world too, you've got to be serious. You have to be serious. Yeah. But that's the difference, yeah. Spider, talk us through the, the whole bypass thing, how it came about, what happened and then uh, how, how it changed your life. Through the years, right until 2019, we had some uh, uh, good swell coming off the piers there and it started off in November and it went right through to March. getting up early and surfing and I got through the one time and I didn't, I ignored it, I just surfed through it. And then um, I started slowly getting out of breath and I couldn't work out why. And I thought maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's just me getting old or something. Well, something's wrong here. Yeah. We got the news that Spider had had a heart attack on the beach at North Beach he's seen as sort of a figure of strength and health so it really really was a, a big shock. It was really scary for all of us to you know when, when that happened. We could have like maybe have lost him. You could see it had taken a, a really big strain on him psychologically I think it was a massive knock for him. I was in the hospital I was in the same room with uh, this guy Peter Schumann and we were both going in and I just said to him okay I'm going in first I'll see the other side Peter. When I woke up he, he passed on I took that as an example, like, hey, you know what, Peter's done his job, I haven't done my job, I need to go and finish the job that God wants me to do. Many people in their sort of late 60s don't recover from that sort of thing and it's, it's sort of a down, down, downhill from there. Um, with Spider, it's kind of gone the other way and he's reinvented himself in a sense and it's re revitalized him, it's given him a new lease on life. So I had the double bypass and I went right down to the very beginning and I learned all the way, I learned to walk, uh, learned to surf again and I went back to my skateboarding. But I think just how he's overcome that is just uh, 
his, his positive uh, outlook on life and uh, just getting back out there and uh, you know not letting something like that take him back. Yeah, with him being fit and strong, he just keeps going, hey? And now I'm in a place where I'm actually challenging myself. I think of myself when I'm 26 or whatever, I served at my best, I want to be better than that. Yeah, it just helps that a little bit, you know, sometimes you feel a little bit slippery and it breaks your concentration, so you've got to keep focusing the whole time. I think for me, Spider is the embodiment of mystery. Um, and what I mean by that is, I mean, if you take the analogy from music, you know, a lot of people can play music and you get a lot of musicians, but not everybody's an artist. And I think uh, what makes an artist is somebody that just has that mystique to what they do, pioneering, innovative, and there's something of their whole being that comes into what they do that is pretty much the silver lining. And I think for Spider, he's just the epitome of that. and from the smallest little grom, anyone can walk into his factory and you'll walk up to the guy and you know, shake his hand and it's a really special thing to see that he's just got time for everyone. He's kind of like a dad that you that you want to have on the side there. I look up to him immensely and I've learned a lot of life lessons from Spider. such an icon in that North Beach community because if he's out in the water and somebody comes past him uh, paddling or surfing and he feels that he can help that person improve, he'll say to them, hey, try this on your board, try moving your arms like that, bend your knees like this, have you thought about stretching like that? And he's always got these little nuggets of information. Tyrell Johnson taught me to uh, look at 10 ways before you paddle out and visualize yourself surfing it so it programs my mind. So when I go out when I go out there, it just automatically happens. You can ask anybody and they'll say he's the, the a little Grom. At 76 years old today, Spider must be the oldest Gromit in the world and, and the youngest Gromit at heart as well, just because he's so passionate about what he does. You see him going down to the beach and if it's on shore, he's going to be skateboarding. I don't think I've got any regrets, eh? Um, you know, it's a funny thing, things work out to your advantage. Uh, I could have gone overseas if I had, I wouldn't have what I've had here. Yeah. I've had good ways here. Yeah. We have good people. The lifestyle we have is good. I'm still motivated to go surfing. It's my hobby. I just find that whenever um, I've got spare time, I duck into the computer and I sit there designing boards. That's my passion. I love doing it. Spider will be forever engraved in surfing's history in South Africa. Yeah.